today I want to tell you all about the beautiful province of Nan in Northern Thailand. Let's go. So as you can tell from the intro, Nan is one of the most beautiful provinces you'll find in Thailand. Probably one of the most beautiful places you'll find in the entire world. Yes, it is that stunning. It's located around 700 kilometers north of Bangkok on the border of Laos. We flew with Air Asia. It was a nice, easy hour long flight. It cost around 2000 baht, which today is around 45 pounds or around 64 US dollars. Now there are other airlines that do fly to Nan, uh, like Nok Air for instance. So do check around for prices before you book your flight because all the airlines are pretty much the same. If I had a choice, I would actually probably fly with Nok. You could spend your whole holiday just driving around the mountains in your car and you'd be in absolute awe of the sheer beauty of this province. Today, however, I wanna share with you my top five must-dos in that. All right, number one, Bok Klua Salt Well. So Bok Klua is an ancient salt well. Bok means well and Klua in Thai means salt, if I've said that correctly. And it sits in a tiny village of the same name, Bok Klua. So in Buckley, you have this main well that produces all of this salt. Oddly enough, there are other wells in the same village that contain little to no salt. So I'm not sure why the concentration of salt in this well is so strong, but it must be super, super concentrated because the amount of salt they produce on a daily basis is absolutely ridiculous. We are talking at 60 kilos of salt per day. So we weren't fortunate enough to see the actual extraction process where they actually make the salt from the water because the time we went was Buddhist Lent, so they weren't actually doing it. But we did get to see a lovely lady called P. Bun Mi roasting salt in massive large pans over open fires to make salt body scrub. Now, while I'm not too clued up on what makes a good salt scrub, watching her in action was an incredible experience. She's there roasting this salt over an open fire in these big cast iron pans while her two dogs sat there huddled up trying to keep warm. Yes, it does get cold in Thailand. In the Nan Mountains, it gets very, very chilly. But it's just a really, really cute, quaint little village. You can take a little walk around. You've got all like the mist going over the mountains in the background. So take that all in before you get back on the road for your next stop, Khao Soi. So me being me, you know I'm gonna drop some food into this video somewhere, somehow, and that food today is going to be Khao Soi. So you wanna come out of the salt well Take a right onto the main road and follow the signs for the waterfall and about a kilometre or so up on your left, you'll find a resort called Arpo de Man. So here they serve up a local speciality in the north of Thailand called Khao Soi. Now, if you're not familiar with Khao Soi, it's a curried noodle dish topped with crispy fried noodles. It is literally my favourite dish of any dish in the whole of Thailand. And while I wouldn't say that this is the best version of khao soi I've ever had in my life, the view from the restaurant while you're eating it is nothing short of incredible. You're sitting in an open air restaurant looking over the most beautiful valley you could imagine eating a pretty solid bowl of northern Thailand's finest. What's not to like? The staff are really friendly here, the local coffee is good and the khao soi, as I said, is solid. Definitely stick it on your list if you're visiting the salt mine. Number three, Wat Phuket. So on your way back from the salt mine and the Khao Soi, you want to take the slightly longer road of Route 
12.56 back to town because you have to make a stop at Wat Phuket. This is without doubt my favorite temple in the whole of Thailand and I've seen a few. It's not so much the temple itself but it's where it's situated. It sits on the top of a hill and when you walk to the back of the temple grounds you get the most amazing views of the rice paddies below which are surrounded by the Nan Mountains. It is amazing, trust me. There's some stairs you can walk down to have a little look around the rice paddies and there's like little huts and like a tiny little village and then there's like this lake slash pond where the monks go fishing uh, for their food. We saw a monk carrying a fish on a stick that he and the other monks had just caught in this lake and uh, he was kind enough to stop and uh, let us take a little bit of footage which was pretty cool. So this is where I would suggest that you stop for a night on the way back to town because although it's a beautiful drive, it's a long drive around the mountains and it is pretty tiring. By the end of the day, I was absolutely knackered. So it was good to get my head down and I'm glad we picked this place. So the Pua Panorama, as the name suggests, is in a district called Pua, which is where Wat Phuket, we just went to, is situated as well. So it's like a five minute drive from there. Now this isn't a five star resort. The rooms are not going to blow you away, but it's cheap, it's clean, and surprise, surprise, the views from the room are absolutely amazing. So you go out onto the balcony and there's a kind of like a fixed hammock attached to the balcony and you can just sit in there have a drink have some food and just check out the stunning views um, of the valley below again it's breathtaking stuff and something i personally never ever ever get tired of seeing sometimes when i go to Krabi after like a few days i'm like oh wow that's another limestone cliff but when i'm in northern thailand there's something about it something mystical something magical i absolutely love it in the morning, breakfast is served outside on like this wooden walkway. There's a tower, you can stand on the top of this tower and get like 360 views almost across these rice fields. It's the same view from your room, but it's just bigger and wider. And sitting with my warm soup on a crisp mountain morning, watching the valley mist hover over the rice fields below is something that I definitely won't forget in a hurry. So I'll stick a link with the Pua Panorama Hotel in the description box below. I'll stick links to Google Maps to all these places but I'll stick a link to the Pua Panorama. Now this isn't going to be an affiliate link. I used to use Agoda and Booking.com affiliate links but then I actually worked out that when you clicked them although they say and you always hear influencers say oh my affiliate links don't cost you any extra money the ones for Agoda, Booking.com all those travel sites do actually cost you extra so it's only a couple of pounds extra a couple of dollars extra but that's how they cover the commission they have to pay and I didn't know that before and since I found that out no more affiliate links from me. So just shop around, I'll stick a link, just Google Maps link, just shop around for the best price you can get, or actually even better, just contact the hotel directly. Number five, eat Makwen. All right, so we're back on the food. So if you haven't heard of Makwen, it's a spice from the same family as the Szechuan peppercorn, and it's grown in a place called Ban Palak in Nam which as you've probably guessed by now is another beautiful part of the country. We actually went there to do an interview with a Makwen farmer and I'll link that video in the description if you are interested. Here in Nan, they use it on everything. They use it in paste, they use it in soups, they use it as marinade to rub on fried pork and fried chicken, but most commonly, and it's used mostly in la. So la kua, is a northern Thai meat salad. Not to be confused with the Isan lap that most people would have seen, which is minced meat, herbs, lime juice, toasted rice, and loads and loads of chili, okay? So this is, this bears no resemblance to that, barring the minced meat part. So lap kua, you've got all sorts of pork, you've got minced pork, you've got pork liver, intestine, all sorts of stuff cooked in an array of spices, most notably deeply or long pepper and the local Ma Quen. So the best version of lap we had on this whole trip was at a restaurant called Puan Pu Kao. We had northern lap, lap kua, and we also had deep fried pork ribs with a Ma Quen rub. Both were absolutely fantastic. The restaurant, just such a cute, quaint little 
traditional Nan restaurant right in the middle of town. Really, really do recommend you go and check it out. They were even drying their own dried chilies and their own Macuen, which was really, really cool to see. I'll link to that in the description below. Okay, so that's my five things that I think you should personally consider doing in Nan. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Are any of these things something you can see yourselves doing when the tourism opens back up in Thailand? Now there's definitely a lot more to do in Nan, especially in Nan town. It's full of wonderful ornate temples, real traditional style houses, um, really good restaurants, really good coffee shops. So if you do go to town, definitely check out Wanda restaurant for some traditional Northern Thai food. A cafe on the river called Sud Gong Di for some awesome local coffee and handmade cakes. And the famous Wat Pu Min, which is the most famous temple in the whole of Nan. It's got all these ornate pictures all over the walls and stuff. And it tells the history of uh, Nan as a province and as a town. So if you want to see a separate video all about Nan Town, then just leave a comment in the comment section below. And if enough people want it, I will do that for you. So sun's going down now, so I better get inside. I hope you found this video informative. Hope you found it interesting. If you did, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Remember, hit that bell notification so you never miss another video. Hit the like button if you liked the video. If you didn't like the video, find another channel. Let me know where in Thailand and what sort of food you'd like me to cover next. And I will see you guys in the next one.